Welcome back to another action figure review. In today's episode, we have a very, very special character options online exclusive, which is the long-awaited Fugitive Doctor and TARDIS playset. This is something that a lot, and I mean a lot, of fans that have been excited to get their hands on ever since she made her debut back in 2020. And finally, we have her utilised as a plastic dolly. But before we actually take a look at the figure itself, let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. The Doctor and her TARDIS come utilised in this wonderful box with a blue and black style guide for a change, which is a bit different from what we've seen in the previous B&M sets. But you do have some of those similarities, such as the TARDIS on the side, the name of the set, as well as a little red box, but this time stating it's a character online exclusive. And instead of having the Doctor Who logo on the top left corner, you have this chamfer where the logo is printed onto there. And another subtle difference is that they've used the 60th anniversary diamond logo, which again is very nice and it's awesome to see it on here, even though she doesn't really appear in the 60th anniversary, but I suppose this was meant to come out last year and there's been all these obstacles in the way, such as delays being one of the examples. As well as that, you also have plastic windows added onto the window parts of the display, which is amazing because I know a lot of fans these days get annoyed that these aren't included anymore, but I suppose for a collector's item like this, it seemed logical to add that in. And just like the B&M sets, you also have the same blue glowing vortex surrounding the windows, which is pretty much identical to those sets. The back of the box also contains some information about the Fugitive Doctor, as well as some info about her first appearance of the show, so pause if you want to read that. Opening up the box, you have the same blue vortex, however, in the middle of the print, you actually have a photo of the Fugitive Doctor's TARDIS console. This is an actual fact, a insert for the police box she comes with and you can just cut it out and use it as a backdrop for the inside of her TARDIS. This is slightly tricky to get into as you need to make sure that you slide one side in first and then close that door and then do the other side as well. But after a few minutes I finally managed to get it into place but more on that later. Out of the box the Doctor and her TARDIS look fabulous. Like I said this has been long overdue since she made her first appearance on screen for Four years ago. Taking a look at the Fugitive Doctor, my first opinion on her is that she is got to be one of the best looking figurines we've had in such a long while. The amount of dedication that Aljua and the team have put into this is absolutely astounding. Like I said, this was on everyone's wish list to have in our collections because of how iconic she was in her brief appearances. I know it has taken such a long time to even get her as a figure, but Al has said in the past he always wanted to make sure he did this figure properly and not just Frankenstein some parts together and call it a day. And from what's been said, I believe the majority of the figure is brand new barring one or two things. So beginning with the head sculpt, I feel like this is an extremely good likeness to Joe Martin herself. The sheer amount of detail that has gone into making this to make sure the likeness is spot on is genuinely a work of art. They've used the same technique like they did on the Sixth Doctor that came out last year, which I think works wonders here as well. I feel like you get a lot lot more out of the sculpt this way around instead of having the head caked in paint but such details like the eyes the eyebrows and the lips have carefully been painted on as well as having the earrings being depicted in a silver paint which is very nice and crisp and there doesn't seem to be any paint bleeds on mine the hair is also very detailed with all the different washes going on each part and the ponytail is also nicely sculpted and continues the same washes that makes it look very detailed moving down to the costume the coat itself has just been cast in this lovely blue plastic with the buttons all being depicted in gold and the collar being painted in a slight different bluish grey colour. The waistcoat is also slightly duller to the coat which I believe is correct to the on-screen costume which again has just had its base colour casted on instead of painted on. The shirt that she also wears is very detailed with all the little paint apps matching the on-screen garments. The same goes with the cuffs, they all seem to be very close if not identical to what was seen on the on-screen counterpart and then the hands themselves have just been cast in the same color as the head obviously which are also very good the fingers themselves 
do look very skinny, but I don't know if that's just me personally. I just think it looks slightly odd. The trousers or the leggings that she seems to wear are just cast in a matte black color, which I believe the top half of the legs and the top half of the arms, which I may add, are just reused from that Donald Noble figure that we actually got from way back when. So it's a clever bit of reuse here. And I don't think the part reuse doesn't actually look out of place whatsoever. So I will give them gold stars for that because it doesn't look out of place or you can't tell that they've been reused and it really contrasts well with the rest of the figure. And then finally, moving down to the boots, they have just been painted in a gloss black with smaller detailings to make them look like the Doctor's brogues, which are very similar to the Doc Martens that Peter Capaldi wore. For accessories, the Doctor comes with an iconic blaster, which again is very detailed with all the little different paint decals. The base color seems to be this dull gray color, with sections of the gun being utilized in gold and silver, with these orange bits going down the side of the blaster, and yes, it does fit into the Doctor's hand when angled at the right position. Although I will say that it does sit rather loosely, so it is a bit of an issue, but it is still cool nonetheless. On a whole, this is a very strong figure to come out of the range in such a long time. I know that last year's exclusive wasn't really held with high praises considering the likeness for the 14th Doctor wasn't a great lookalike for David Tennant, but like I said, I think they should really ditch painting on the skin tones as I think it just hides so much of the sculpt and it really does show on here that just casting on the color probably is the way to go. I mean, it's not too dissimilar to what the Star Wars Black series like does with all their human characters but you know time will tell with this year's releases. Now looking at something that's been seen quite a few times in this range which is the TARDIS that was used by the Fugitive Doctor. Now this has had some slight revisions in regards to some of the parts that were used to make the toy look more accurate to what was seen on screen. The roof and the lamp are entirely new pieces, which I would argue are much better than the concaved roof that's been seen on previous classic boxes. The wood grain texture is very nice, but although I personally think it doesn't slightly match with the rest of the box, it does the job and it is very detailed. I just think the wood grain should be slightly smaller in my opinion. The lamp is also very nice and matches the on-screen prop well. The blue that's been used on the entire box is a very good match to the on-screen police box. There doesn't seem to be much of a dirty wash on this box, but I suppose that the on-screen prop didn't have a dirt effect from what I've been seeing in photos and whatever else. So, you know, props to that too. You also have the police box signs, which have all been painted black with the text being painted in a vibrant white. The windows themselves have also been given white frosting to make them look illuminated. But one thing that I have noticed is that you've seemed to have used the windows that were used on the first Doctor's TARDIS that we got way back in 2021. I don't know whether it was meant to be a cock up or if it was deliberate, because technically on the front and the back they are meant to just be standard windows. But the left and right side do retain the window frames, so technically it is meant to be accurate on how you look at it. But I'll leave that up to you. Finally, you have some similar detailing, such as the pull to open sign, which is very similar to the second Doctor's one, if I can recall, that we saw in that CO exclusive a couple of years back, but this time it is a lot cleaner. And the door handle has just been left unpainted because technically this prop shouldn't have a door handle. And the keyhole, which has just been given a bit of gold paint over the top with a slight dirty wash on top. Unfortunately, this TARDIS is without lights or sounds. I know this has become a disappointment to some, but on a whole, I was more interested in getting the Doctor in the first place than I was the TARDIS, so don't get me wrong, it's still cool that we have this, as technically this can double up as a first or second Doctor TARDIS, as this was how the prop actually looked in season four and was originally built for twice upon a time as well to replicate that original Prochowski box. And if you felt like it, I mean, I don't know yet, but I might even display it with those doctors or I may even track down a second one. I mean, or we may get one in the future. I mean, who knows? The, the possibilities are endless here. However, this does feature the same opening door mechanism, which isn't new, but has been seen on every other TARDIS. As you can see, the console backdrop really works a treat. I know some people have classed this as lazy and they said, you know, why does it not come installed already? But sadly, the sculpt itself, it can't retain a backdrop on the inside like the new series box did because they would have a sheet of plastic or whatever on the inside. This sadly doesn't, so it means that there is no other way. And personally, the on-screen prop as well as the classic boxes never had 
their inserts. So, you know, it's up to you. You can either have it or not. I know the 13th Doctor one was the same. People actually got creative and did a similar thing where they did cut out a interior card. So it's entirely up to you. No one's actually forcing you to put the insert in, but it is a nice little attention to detail. And personally, I'm not too bothered by it. And then to close the doors, you just simply bring the left door forward to, until it clicks into place. And then the right door is spring loaded, which shuts when pushing the button to release the mechanism. Like I said, this is a really nice box nonetheless, and it can easily double up as an Alt Prohoski box. The updated tooling on the roof is also an added bonus, which means we're more likely to see more accurate boxes from this period in the future. For articulation wise, the Fugitive Doctor has got quite a bit. Her head can turn from side to side, but is hindered by her collar. The arms can do a full 360 twist, with the biceps being able to do the same. The arms can also bend at a 90 degree angle at the elbow. She also has wrist articulation that can do a 4 through 60 turn. She has articulation at her waist that can turn all the way. And then finally finishing off, she has thigh articulation. Her legs can move forward and out to the sides and she can also bend at the knee. So on a whole, I think this is a great start to 2024. Finally, we have a character that fans were craving to get a hold of. Okay, I know there are pros and cons with this set, mainly with how it's taken over four years to get, but sadly, that is the way things are run now, and there's no other way about it. I suppose the reasoning for it was the load of new parts. They were trying to find a way of trying to do it cheaply, as well as trying to make it as accurate as possible, because like I said before, there was no way they were going to ever Frankenstein it together and call it a day. I actually listened to Who Corner to Corner's interview with Al, where he actually stated that it took over five attempts to actually get the head right, and even then, he still thought there was room for improvement. And I get that. He wanted to make sure that the first first black actor to play the Doctor got an action figure that did the character justice, which I will say that they've definitely achieved here. The sheer amount of detailing that has gone into this figure is absolutely amazing, and I feel like character options have put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this figure. As for the TARDIS, I think this was definitely a plus, as it depicts the on-screen prop rather well in my opinion. As for the backdrop, I think it's one of those things where you either love it or hate it. I think it is a neat little idea for people who might want to add this in to go along with all their other new series TARDISes that have inserts. However, one thing that I will say that needs room for improvement, and I know that it is out of Owl's hands, is the website itself. I know a lot of people were disappointed with how the website kept crashing on people when they were trying to get it, and it was due to the fact that there was so much traffic on the website itself. People were having to wait up to five hours to even get a hold of this set, which I you generally couldn't believe. I was able to pick this up straight away, but I think that is because the news didn't reach as far, and it was quite early in the morning when I saw the news myself. I think the longest I've ever had to wait was about 30 to 45 minutes trying to get that abominable snowman set, but that is only my experience. I think one thing for sure was that it wasn't going to sell out within a day. The previous online exclusive, which featured the 13th and the 14th Doctor, only sold out a few months back, which meant there was still plenty to go around. I'm not sure how many are left but I reckon these will be around for a little while longer but if you're interested in buying this set then I highly recommend going over to Character Options site to get a hold of it today. I would argue to say that it's definitely worth the money. You pretty much get an almost brand new figure that fans have been begging for a release as well as her TARDIS to go along with it. So that pretty much wraps up this review. Hopefully there'll be more stuff coming out in the future. I know some stuff from Toy Fair such as the 15th Doctor, Ruby Sunday and a Wrath Warrior have been shown. I really love the fact that we've got we'll be getting a Ralph Warrior or fingers crossed we'll be getting one and I can't wait to see what else is going to be in store so hopefully I'll be back in the near future so stay tuned for then